All right, just gonna do a video showing how Billy Graham actually helped mainstream the uh, charismatic movement in America. And because it's all part of his, his apostate ecumenicalism that he was doing back all the way back in the 1940s and 50s. But this is again, once again, the kind of stuff that came out of Billy Graham's ministry. He was yoking up with the Pentecostals and charismatic with their demonic counterfeit uh, gifts of the spirit, uh, which and he broke the lines of, of resistance of biblical fundamentalists with the charismatic uh, charismatic heretics and their demonic false lying signs and wonders from the power of Satan. So let's read this article. This is on wayoflife.org. David Cloud uh, talks about this. He says, the man who helped break down the resistance against the Pentecostal charismatic movements was none other than Billy Graham, the prince of evangelicalism. In 1962, Graham spoke at the Full Gospel Businessmen's International Conference and praised the charismatic ecumenical movement. Graham was featured on the cover of the October 1962 issue of FGBMI's Voice magazine. In 1967, Graham was a keynote speaker at the, ded at the dedication ceremony of or Oral Roberts University. University. No personality represented a more radical, unscriptural, wild-eyed brand of Pentecostalism than Oral Roberts. He claimed apostolic healing power, but many died during his healing crusades. And he, after he claimed, and after he claimed that a 900-foot-tall Jesus promised him blessings on Earth, blessings in the City of Faith Hospital, it went bankrupt. So, this this heretic Oral Roberts was claiming to see this 900-foot-tall Jesus, which you know sounds like a nephilim he was seeing. Uh, a spirit of a Nephilim, but he sees his 900 foot, claims to see this 900 foot tall Jesus who tells him to build this hospital and then it went bankrupt. You know, even though this 900 foot tall Jesus allegedly said he would pay for the hospital. Yeah, and, and then Graham was actually promoting, Billy Graham was promoting this charismatic, this, this lunatic charismatic who actually ended up killing people during his false healing crusades. Because that's, that's the fruit of this charismatic movement and Billy Graham was fully promoting that says, by the 1970s, the attitude within evangelicalism had changed uh, dramatically. In March 1972, Christianity Today observed, quote, a new era of the spirit has begun. The charismatic experience moves Christians far beyond glossalia, tongue speaking. There is light on the horizon. An evangelical uh, renaissance is becoming visible along the Christian highway. From the frontiers of all, this, all the sects to the high places of the Roman Catholic communion, this appears to be one of the most strategic, mo uh, strategic moments in the church's history. Yeah, exactly, but what church are we talking about? We're, talk we're not talking about the biblical church because the Charismatics and Pentecostals are of the spirit of Antichrist. It's that simple. Uh, the, char the Charismatics and Pentecostals do not have gifts from the Holy Spirit. They have satanic mimicking of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and yeah, sure, you know, the church they're talking about is obviously the Roman Catholic Church because the Billy Graham, uh, Billy Graham and his organization and the Charismatics, they're all of their father, uh, the devil, and also the Roman Catholic Church. They were all in, in leagues with the satanic uh, papal system in Rome. It's that simple. And you know, that's why you got Benny Hinn caught fornicating over in Rome and in, in, uh, the Roman Catholic Church, the, the obscenity of the area. Sorry, I'm running on some lack of sleep. I was up pretty late last night, so just bear with me. If I sound a bit disoriented, that's why. Uh, this is why it's important to get proper sleep at night. Uh, but anyway, I've learned my lesson on that. But it says, by the 1970s, a majority of younger evangelicals in the Church of England were charismatic. Uh, Ian Murray, Evangelicalism Divided, page 135. By 1987, the Evangelical, the Evangelical Times in England observed that a large sum would say a greater part of the Evangelical world is in some measure influenced by the various branches of the charismatic scene. By 1999, the Evangelical Alliance in England included Pentecostals at every level of leadership, and no group on the council is opposed to the Pentecostal position. Renewal, March 1999. Uh, the same was true in the United States. By 1992, 80% of the membership of the National Association of Evangelicals was Pentecostal, up from 62% in 1987. At the, uh, and the president of the NAE, Don Argue, belonged to the Assemblies of God. So they were already getting into the evangelical movement both in England and the United States. But continuing on, roughly half of the attendees at Billy Graham's 1983 conference for interim Evangelicals and evangel evangelists, sorry, in Amsterdam were Pentecostal or charismatic. In 1984, the Fuller Theological Seminary made Pentecostal David Du Plessis uh, its resident uh, consultant on ecumenical affairs. And in 1985, Fuller established the David J. Uh, du Plessis, I hope I'm saying that right, Center for Christian Spirituality, unquote. 
uh, and by then both the dean of the Fuller Theological Seminary and the president of the Gordon Conwell Seminary were Pentecostals. In 1989, J.I. Packer, a professor at Regent College and the senior editor of Christianity Today, which is Billy Graham's uh, magazine he, he uh, owned at one point, said the charismatic movement must be uh, in judged a work of God. Uh, as his Calvary contender, July 15th, 1989. He said, sharing charismatic experience is often declared to unify Protestants and Roman Catholics at a deeper level than that which is their doctrine divides them. Uh, th this, if so, gives charismaticism great ecumenical significance, unquote. So they're already admitting that they're in league with the Roman Catholic Church, and Billy Graham promoted all of this. Billy Graham was a agent of Romanism, a papist agent, an agent for the papacy, an agent for the papists, I'll put it that way. It's that simple. And all these guys, these Charismatics, these Pentecostals, they're all described in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 to 15, of these false apostles and ministers of Satan who come as the ministers of righteousness. So don't be deceived by these guys. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.